Hi, I'm Daniel McCarthy and this is my assignment. I'm first going to show you it running. Okay, so it asks you for horizontal and horizontal uh, and vertical inputs. So I'm, I'm first going to write hello. So it says invalid input. So this is validation going on here. So uh, if I go into the minus zone, there's an error again. So let's enter something valid. So we go 30 by 2. So yeah, so it's generated a bunch of non-normalized data and a bunch of normalized data and it's also printed out the highest number and the lowest number and the highest number and the lowest number by here as well and um, <clears throat> so yeah let me explain what's going on in the code I uh, am using this string multiple times, so I set it as a definition. So I could just like use the definition in whatever function I need or variable, and then it'll set it to this string rather than entering the same string multiple of times. So essentially, what what first happens is, is the program parses the arguments if there is any arguments available. The reason I've done above one is because the file name also counts as an argument. Uh, so essentially it causes the parse arguments function, which is a function I made, which basically splits up the data by the name and the value. So imagine this, so if I go test equals 30, test is the name, 30 is the value and it, it can split this to unlimited arguments and then once it's uh, made a bunch of arguments it'll then set the chosen file uh, to the value of um, the file that's been specified but if there is none it will be set to zero so that's when I go down here if chosen file then it'll choose the custom file and open it and print out the name if there was no file chosen it'll use output.txt and we use write access here because you obviously want to um, write to the file and this will essentially erase the file and um, start writing from zero bytes again so essentially every time I run this all the data in the calculation output will be gone and then it will write the new data it is an appending it is an appending to the data so obviously if the files null like the the file point is null then there was an error so an error opening the file so I'll just print out can open file but this won't disrupt the program because the program will still be able to um, the program will still be able to uh, function, it just won't be able to write to the file. So the get integer from file, uh, this passes here, basically I pass the std in uh, stream file to, uh, yeah, the std in file pointer to here, to this function, and it basically uses the hold on it basically uses the um, where is it there it basically uses the str string tall function here and so what happens is I bring in a buffer I, I bring in data into the buffer uh, from the file and I bring in 10 bytes and then I set the value uh, I use this function which essentially converts it, attempts to convert an integer, uh, no, convert a char array into an integer, and if it can't do that, then uh, it'll return, um, it'll basically set, uh, it'll basically return zero on failure, or, um, it, or if there was an error, it'll set the error number to E range. 
So essentially, if this function returns zero, or if this function returns zero, there was a problem. So yeah. So uh, back up to the main function. I I um, yeah. I set the random seed to the system time. Um, and then I get a multi-dimensional array using this function that I made and it essentially um, I, I, I just split everything up just to make the main function look a bit tidier and it basically does it it basically uh, allocates the uh, the space on the heap required to hold the pointers and then it sets all those uh, it sets all those, um, or it sets all that memory to uh, rows that it allocates on the heap again. So uh, I, I've done some diagrams in the report that you can look at to see that. And uh, this is my get number function. This is how I get the maximum and minimum number. If you if you supplied the uh, um, a one or higher you know then it will set the number the starting number to zero if you set it to zero you know this to zero then you're essentially looking for the lowest so then it'll set it to the maximum uh, like the greatest number possible for assigned integer and then it essentially just if it's for the biggest it'll essentially check to see if C is above number and if it is, then it sets number to C. And if it isn't, then it will check if, no, and basically if it isn't the biggest that you're looking for, you're looking for the lowest, it'll check if number is above C and then set number to C. So then by doing this, I can find uh, the greatest or lowest numbers. So yeah, I, I have a normalize array function, which normalizes the array and uh, then prints it out again i used the i used the um i basically used used the um formula that was providing the assignment brief to do this and uh, i had a problem with this at first because it was integer but it turns out it needs to be double to work correctly so yeah this is the normalizing function and yeah, this get length from token function is basically used as a. Um, it basically gets the length of. It basically gets the the length of the string uh, up to up to when it finds the token. So. You know, if the token's equals, it'll return the length of the string up to that token. So, yeah. And it's used in the parse arguments function. Um, parse arguments function, it, uh, it uses a lot of allocation on the heap by using the calloc function. And uh, yeah, so I've got some free argument memory. I got a free argument memory function which frees the memory for the arguments, and I've also got a free array memory function which frees the rows of the array, and then f finally frees the uh, addresses to the uh, indexes of the array. So yeah, this is uh, my assignment. So I hope you liked it. I've added extra functionality and. The extra functionality is this get argument value thing, which basically can split the um, split the data down. So I can go file equals calculation output, test equals thirty, whatever I want. And these arguments can be in any order because of the way I've designed the system. So you know I could have that there and that there, and it would still work, which I'll show now. See, it's still it's still managed to select a file. So. Yeah, that's my assignment. Hopefully I got a good mark. Thanks very much. It was a fun assignment to do. And uh, I hope you like it.
Right.